everybody! Hello, hello! Well, in yesterday's video, which was uh, we were making a section for our Edith Holden lap book, I postulated the idea of doing the 100 day project. It's a huge commitment. I mean, it's 100 days, it's three months, it's a big commitment. But I have decided to go ahead and do it. And I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't do one every day for a hundred days. But at the end of it, I will have a hundred things done. Even if it means on some days I do two, some days I might do three. But I will have a hundred things at the end of a hundred days. Right, I'm a bit late to the party because it started on 22nd of February, today being the 28th. So I'm... A little bit late, but I'm going to, well, cheat's the wrong word. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to reassign some things to be from the 100 day challenge. And if you watch the live stream on Sunday, you will have seen me make, uh, actually I made the Edith box, but I already had this one made. Um, it's a box to keep your tags in. I haven't decided yet whether to put a sort of handle on it or not. I, I like the look of it as it is, so possibly not. And I've used Tim Holtz papers, uh, like that bit that's folded over there. It's a pocket, got bits in it. And it's kind of, I don't know what you call it, a, a truck, a box, a storage box, I don't know. Anyway, it's a useful thing to keep your bits of ephemera in. So I am saying that this tag was day one. <laughs> this tag is day two. This tag is day three. This tag is day four. So that's the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th. So I'm still sort of three off. Um, but I'm going to do one now. So that will help somewhat. And I'm going to, because I've got the Tim Holtz box out and I'm looking at it, I'm going to do a Tim Holtz style one, uh, style tag. That's not going to be the case throughout. I will vary from Tim Holtz to Edith, to Botanical, to Shabby Chic, to anything you can think of. The only thing they will have in common is there'll be a tag. So... I've cut my shape out. This will be my base shape for all my tags that go in there. And it's three and three quarters by seven. And I've cut the corners off. And that's it. That's as far as I've got with this. So what we need to do now is... What? Yes, I'm going to put some modelling uh, paste on it. Now, I, I use PBO modelling paste and it's a ridiculously large pot. Unless you do a lot of, you know, making stuff with modeling paste, I wouldn't recommend you get a pot this size because um, it goes off by the time you finish it. However, I've had this a good couple of years and it's still perfectly good. I'm about halfway down it, I'd say. So I'm just gonna get my um, palette knife. You can use a knife, you can use anything you, you like. Just get it out of the pot. Let's get a bit of paper, shall we? I've obviously used this as an inking sheet. It'll be fine. I don't even care if I pick up some of that ink, to be honest. And I'm just going to, just like I was icing a cake. <gasps> I wish it was a cake. <laughs> and just, I don't want it even. I want sort of ripply bits in it. Um, that's the beauty of modelling paste, really. If I wanted it flat, I'd just use the paper. It doesn't matter if you don't cover all of it. You can leave little bits uncovered. I should say at this stage, this was an idea that I got from someone on Pinterest, but true to Pinterest form, it didn't say who. So whoever you are, thank you very much. So I'm just spreading my modelling paste out. I don't want it particularly thick, but I don't want it particularly thin. It's just kind of not too thick, not too thin, not too smooth. <laughs> just kind of like, I hope you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can see perfectly. There's big lumps of it around the place. 
bits of it that I've missed completely. That's okay. Don't worry about that. Right, so there we are. We've got our modelling paste on. You can see that there. That's lovely. Right, so let's just give my palette knife a bit of a wipe over because modelling paste, once it sets, is the devil to get off things. Put the lid back on that because the least uh, that gets the better. And then I'm going to get a stamp out. This is an All in Create, I, I think it's it, called Wordy Hexagon, so I don't know. Something, that, that's what it looks like. And I'm going to use it to impress upon what I've just done. So I'm just going to start there, press down, just to leave an impression in that modelling paste. And I want it all over. Oh, it's so lovely. There we go. And down the bottom. It doesn't matter if you get bits like that. It, it, it honestly doesn't matter. It's all texture and that's all we're looking for. There we go. Right. So let me just show you what it kind of looks like. Right there you can see the stamp in it. And now what we need to do is leave that to dry. Now, it, I'd give it an hour. You know, let's just say we'll give it an hour. And I'll come back to you when that's dry. And we'll move on to the next. Look at that section. It's beautiful. We'll move on to the next thing. What you must do is go and wash your stamp immediately, otherwise you've wrecked it. So I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to leave that to dry. I'll pop you on pause and I'll be back when it's dry. Right, so I think that's pretty dry. As you can see, mine is a creamy sort of colour. It doesn't dry white, which it's fine. That doesn't bother me because I'm going to cover it anyway. But just be aware of that when you buy yours, you know, see if it dries white, dries clear dries creamy whatever because uh, you can get all of them i've also cut out uh, die cut out one of these dies it's the lattice one comes in this set um which is called who knows it's called mixed media number one and it's number six six zero two two zero i've had it a long time i think it's quite an old die um, but it cuts into the paper and I made stencils out of all of these actually so uh, I've got these as stencils so I've cut that out just out of white paper white well fairly thick paper card you might even call it um, that's that and the other thing I want to do before I set sail on my tag is I want to stamp out a couple of butterflies um, which I'm going to need to put on my tag um, and I've got out my Tim Hawks butterflies set so I just need to select a couple that I want um, that's nice I'll have that one and oh I don't know the peacock butterfly yes why not let's have those just want two. Um, and my stamping block, which is here. I don't suppose for one second these are going to stick to it. Oh, oh, no. I was a bit prem in celebrating. So I'm just going to put, it's because I don't keep my stamps clean. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, glue stick on the back there just to hold them on and ink them up and I'm just going to use Versafine Claire in, in black the Versafine Claire Nocturne they call it ink them up just get my stamp platform out my stamping board I don't know if you've seen this before it's a Mr F special <laughs> it is um, it's it's you know it's a stamp plat board it's perfect but what it is what this orange stuff is 
is years ago, apparently, I don't know, I am not into camping or anything like that at all. I can't, I just don't get it. I don't get the whole concept of camping. Um, but years ago, apparently, you used to get these, I mean, it came in about a six foot at least roll by about two foot six. It was massive. So he's cut me this bit off and apparently he used to use it years ago. Maybe you still do for all I know. Uh, for when you were camping to lie down so it protected you from sort of sharp twigs and sharp storms and stuff like that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine me camping? Um, anyhow, uh, Mr F recognised it instantly and knew it would be the perfect thing to, to use for stamping because just got that bit of give in it. The other side actually is spongy but just a bit too spongy. So he mounted it on my... <laughs> on my kitchen board that was a pound from Poundland. It might have been a pound for three actually, come to think of it. So, um, just with masking tape, just to see if it worked. Um, but look at that, I mean, it's perfect. It is the most perfect stamping board ever. So thanks, Mr F, you've done it again. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, I nearly died when I saw him coming in with this rolled up kind of well it looked like a yoga mat and I thought oh no we've got enough yoga mat but you can see it gives an absolutely beautiful result so what I want to do now is um, colour them in so I'm just I'm just going to blot them off a little bit I can find a little bit of scrap paper somewhere I've no idea what this is but sometimes that VersaFine Claire it just takes a little minute to dry and I don't want to smudge it so I'm just going to blot them off there's nothing come off so we would have been alright but sometimes I don't know why I mean this pad isn't the juiciest in the world so you know maybe that makes a difference and I'm going to use my beautiful Tim Holtz Distress watercolour pencils they were gifted to me at Christmas by my lovely friend Kerry and I haven't used them very much but I'm going to use them now. So I'm going for Barn Door first off and the beauty of these Distress Pencils is that they are named the same as all the Distress products. So you know if you've got Barn Door you've got a red, if you've got Mustard Seed you've got a yellow, they're all the right colours. So let's go for red with this peacock one and I'm, I don't care if I go over the outline because I'm going to cut it out so I don't have to be too fussy about outlines and stuff. So I'm going to put red up at the top here and a little bit of red at the bottom probably. I'll get his eye, that eye again down there. So I'm just, all I'm doing is laying down pigment. Want not to sort and match the other side. So you can see I'm not being careful about the edges. They're going to be cut off. It'll be fine. So I've got a water brush here. Just squeeze some water through. And then go into your pigment. Just soften it up. And then just drag it to wherever you want it. So they sort of come alive when you put water on them. Just like the inks do. So that's the barn door. There, and then maybe an orangey colour. I've got loads. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and I've got three sets. So I've got 36 colours to go at. So let's use the orange. What's that one? It is Spice Marmalade. Let's go for that up next to his body. There we go. Lovely. We'll just do the same thing. Just wet the pigment to get it moving and then draw that back through into the barn door. Like that. 
So you can be quite precise with these pencils, which is, you know, you can't say for some things in the distress line. So I'm just wetting the pigment and then moving it to where I want it to be. And I want that to be just a little bit brighter. Might use a yellow actually in there on top of that orange. So this one is mustard seed. So I'm just going to put some yellow down right next to his body. And then just pull that out a little bit. So there we are. And this one the same. So wet that pigment and pull it out. There we are. It's got some gaps there, just fill them in. Uh, and for his body, I'm going to use black suit. So I'm just putting it down there and then I'm just going to wet it and fill it, fill in all his body. There we go. So that's that one done. Now then this one. Oh, what shall I do for this one? Let's use, let's use, what's this one? Tumbled glass. This one is... Yeah, salvage patina. What's a project without a bit of salvage patina? So I'm going to go on the outside of his wings with the salvaged patina. Oh, I love this colour so much. It's a beautiful colour. So as I say, no heed really to where the edges of his wings are. They're going to be fussy cut. So there we are. Quite like that actually, leaving the centre just with the white. I'm just going to run some water through my brush to get rid of the yellows and oranges. So just moisten that up and drag it in so there's a little hint of it there yeah I like that I might be inclined just to leave that as it is if you can hear chopping in the background you're wondering what's going on I can tell you it's Mr F still busy with his project and I think when it's finally finished, which might be quite a long time, it's a very precise and exceedingly pretty project, um, then I think he's going to show us. He's going to take a video and show us. I might just add a little bit more salvage patina down here. A little bit more pigment. I'm not sure it likes coming off when the paper's not bone dry, but we'll try. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's lovely. So into the pigment, then draw it up into this pigment. Water pen stop working. Oh, I've got a real flash of red there from, must have been on my pen, I suppose. I don't know. But anyway, we have a flash of red. I think I've watered it out sufficiently. So yeah, there we are. I like those. I like that one because it's quite muted. And this one because it's quite bright. I might just go back into that red with, what's this one here? Uh, candied apple. Let's have a go with the candied apple down the 
sides here. Because the candied apple is a real red, isn't it? And down here. Barn door is a more vintagey sort of red, I would say. In true keeping with the whole distress line. There we go. There we go. Very nice. Like that. I'm just going to give those a bit of a waft over so they're dry. That's lovely. And I'm just going to come back into this mustard seed here and just strengthen that yellow up a little bit make sure I've, yeah you see I've got red on my pen so just pull that out a little bit there we go that's nice that's lovely right okay let's put the lid on the water brush pop these away in the homes I don't want to break them I'm so lucky to have them. They're wonderful. There we go. So that's my pencils put away. Now I just need to uh, zip around here to fussy cut them. I won't make you watch that. I'll put you on pause. Right, so I've fussy cut these. And with all fussy cuts, you get a white border. So I just want to do away with that white border and I'm going to use the same colour ink as I used on the butterfly which is the salvage patina and just go around that and get rid of that white edge which annoys me so much. I'm just using a finger dauber and I find these perfect for going around fussy cuts more so than the big daubers that you haven't got a whole heck of a lot of control over pretty numb instrument so I'm just going round and round I don't really care if I get some on the butterfly itself it's the same colour so it'll be fine there we go now this fellow I've cut his body off um, because I don't need it so rather than flap around trying to cut his head out and stuff like that I didn't bother the next one I did because I want him uh, in total so let's go around him with a bit of candied apple make his border nice and red I think it's little details like this that makes a difference. You probably don't even see them, but you would if it wasn't there. You'd know, you know, it's one of those things. And that's just lending a nice bit of red to the border there. So that's right. So there they are, they're done. So let's put those to one side, those to one side. <laughs> I'm running out of one side but never mind and let's bring this back on and also this now this I'm going to trim out but just for now it's easier to handle while it's still got its edge on so I'm going to I've looked at two of my oxide sprays one is my much beloved rusty hinge and just give make sure you give the oxides a shake because they do you know parts of it do sink to the bottom that's fine and this one um, this one's nearly empty I need to reorder that it's obviously been my f most favorite one so I'm just going to go in with a rusty hinge first off and spray it I'm 
that will probably do for the rusty hinge. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that. Let it do its thing. Oh, it's gorgeous. You can see all the texture from the stamp. Can you see? Oh, it's just gorgeous. I just love it. Sorry that I get carried away with things. <laughs> but I do get carried away with things. That's just me. There we go. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? It's pretty gorgeous. That's what I'd say. So this I want in rusty hinge all over really. So I'm just going to spray that. Like that. I think that's fine. I think I've caught all of that. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to dry them off and then I'm going to put some speckled egg. Is that what it is? Yeah, speckled egg. This has turned out so, so nice. You, you know, you can use any colours. At the minute I seem to be stuck in a bit of a rusty hinge, speckled egg, salvage patina type place. But you can use whatever colours you like. You could make a pretty version. A botanical version, you can use whatever you want. You can use whatever stamp you want. You know, it could be birds or tree branches or anything. Um, this is just the way I've chosen to do it. Which, of course, doesn't make it right. I love Rusty Hinge. It's such a gorgeous colour. Especially when you couple it with salvage patina, patina and speckled egg. It's extra gorgeous then. So I've still got areas that have got no colour in them. And that's where this is going to come into play. So that's dry enough. Now this, the spray doesn't work. So I have to kind of apply it. As I can really, and I can't get enough out of there. So um, let's let's pour. Let's pour some on. <laughs> Not much though. Ooh, yeah, that's enough. And let's put a bit, if we can, up here. Yeah, I should have gone to wash my spray out. <laughs> I think I just need a little bit more than that. Come on, there you go. That's it. That's lovely. So that's got round that problem. Problem? What problem? So let's add a little bit of water to that. And then this, there's quite a lot there where we tipped it on. So just want that to go up into the rusty hinge like that and this here that's looking nice looking nice don't really want that along the bottom yeah that's nice there's none up there but that's fine I'm all right with that and it's very light down here I'm also fine with that. And there's a piece there that's almost white. Yeah, I'm good with that. Look at all this rusty hinge. Uh, speckled egg. So let's get rid of that before a disaster befalls us. And let's dry that off. It's looking really, really nice. I like it. Mm, not so sure, actually, come to think of it. Let's get a piece of something. Um just want that to come down to the bottom like that that's it that's fine right so let's dry that off then flushed with success dryer yes oh it's it's really nice the the stamp that we put on is you can see it all it's it, yeah I like that technique I'm pretty sure I'll be using that technique again. It 
So this is, you know, of course, just our background. We're getting there, won't be long. I think we're about there. So I'm going to ink around the edge because for what I have in mind, it'll be easier to ink the edge now. Actually, I'll leave that bit of paper and use that as my inking piece. Um, than once we've got everything else put on it. So I'm just going to take my vintage photo. And just go around the edge. Now it's a bit lumpy and bumpy from all that um, modeling paste get with the program so I'm not going to get the clearest of edges but it will just edge it nicely for us which brings it in brings the center in really nice actually it's accentuating the uh, the modeling paste it's, it's doing a really good job it's gorgeous over that speckled egg I don't know if yeah you can you can see that where it's look at that along the bottom it's just beautiful gorgeous okay so let's get cracking right so what I want to do is sort of create um, kind of cruciform shape and I'm going to use the remnants that I had left from making this box because if I don't use them now they get stuck in the remnant box and they never see the light of day so I also have um, I also am using some of these word sticks. Whoops. I haven't shut the bottom, obviously. Yeah, they're called... What are they called? Ephemera Pack Snippets Number Strips, they're called. But some of them got words on, so they're not just numbers. And I'm also using um, the Tim Holtz Ephemera Pack that's nature notes. Th those are the two things that I'm using. Let's just straighten that up a little bit. Right, so um, I want something that goes top to bottom. And I've cut this out and I think that will do. That does definitely go top to bottom. But it does need inking. Because it just looks a bit don't actually know whether it'd be better if I tore it. Let's have a think about that. I think it might, so I'm just going to tear that. Just looks a bit, um, well, a bit straight, really. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just tear that off. I'm going to be left with a much thinner piece, obviously, than I started with, but that's okay. There's no rules here. We can make up our own rules. I'm not going to stick anything on until I've decided what I want. Because too many times I've stuck things on. thought, yeah, that's great, and then, no, you want to move something, so... Right, so that's going to go there. That looks so much better for being torn. So let's ink that. Oh, it's quiet in here today. Catkins upstairs in repose on our bed. <laughs> he went out last night and he was out for ages. I thought he must have found his girlfriend again, but 
Well, he might have done, but she didn't come back with him anyway. <laughs> do you want to come back to mine? No, I do not. Right, so that's that. And I want something in this top sort of quadrant. Um, so I'm going to use this piece. This is from the Nature Notes Ephemera. And it's kind of going to go there. So I can tear the bottom off because that's just too tall. Tear this side off. And I think that will be... Uh, no, better tear the top off as well. I think you'll see that as well. Right, so that's going to go there in this top quadrant of our cruciform shape. Like that. Yeah, let's ink that. Let's ink as we go. And then we won't get into trouble. Well, <laughs> we're not going to get into trouble. There we go. Right. So that's going to go there. That's going to go over it. Mm, now I need to sort of start thinking. Well, on the opposite quadrant, I want some of this. That was why I wanted to leave this sort of pale. So let's let's cut into that. Let's just cut the frame off for a start. See what I mean about it cutting into into it in order to get this for me now. I have to cut it out of the paper. We don't need all of this, but we'll have a look and see what we do need. I like that shape. I like the fact it's shaped like that. So I'm just going to cut that off about there and along here. I don't need those bits. So there's my up de down -de. There's my lower left quadrant going in there. Like that. Yeah, I like that. It's coming together. And then I've got some other bits that I looked out. I can't quite remember where I thought they were going to go, but we'll have a look and see. Um, I've got quite a few of the number strips, four of them, in fact. Um, that I want as my sort of topper over the whole thing. And these are just bits that they're just remnants cut into strips. So let's try this bit along here. I don't know if I want it sticking out there or not. Um, that bit there, possibly. I'm not sure, I can't remember. That bit going along in between them. Like that. And then did I just have the word strips? I took a photograph that I do know. So let's have a look at the photograph, which I would if I knew where my phone was. Come on, phone. Where are you? How, how can I have lost my phone? Where are you going? It's recording for you. Oh, it's it's a camera at the moment. Oh, well, that's no good. I'm yeah. going to have to work this out myself. Yeah, no, no, we've got other, other methods. Oh, other Don't methods. On, oh, good. Mr. F, once again to the rescue. Do, do, do. Well, while he's doing that, I'm going to stick this down here in this bottom quadrant because I know I want that there. And it's going to be a bit fussy to stick. So let's get on with that. Thought I was going mad that I'd lost my phone. 
my phone is really never more than at the end of my arm. You need to give it a bit. Of this? No, I want the picture I had taken. Ah, right. If you send it to the iMac, please. Shall I pause so we can sort it out? Yes, just pause just for a second. Can you press pause, please? Well, that was a bit of a kerfuffle. <laughs> just to see where I'd put things on the mock-up that I'd done, but I, I liked it, so I wanted to uh, copy it again. So I've stuck my lattice down there. I've got this bit up here, and that's pretty much all we've got. We've got this centre part that goes up there. Right, OK. Now, according to my master plan, <laughs> I had this bit going which says strictly handmade and I had it going up there just not quite as tall as this part then I had this bit which says cremo I think they're a type of cigar or something um, and that comes across there and I'm not tearing these because they have very distinct edges anyway don't want that to stick out there that's it and then what did I have then oh yes this piece this little piece of nothing really and it's just a remnant from a Tim Holtz page that goes across there kind of like that then this goes over there like that. This goes, thinking about it, down here. There, not the J, that bit there. Um, this 452 sticks out the top of something, which I'll put in in a sec. And then this one just goes in there. So there's a fair bit of faffing around went into that so you can see why I didn't want it wasn't keen to uh, to change from it and then on the top we're going to have the field label and a butterfly and a couple of butterfly wings tucked in so that's the kind of general plan right let's get cracking then with the sticking let's get cracking with the sticking um is this the first no the long piece I think is the first bit that goes down Oh no, this piece needs to go down. So I want that quite near that edge. So let's get this stuck down. Good old Mr F for managing to retrieve my photograph. Okay. So that's there. it's very textured it's kind of been resistant to sticking so I'll get my persuader there we go lovely now this bit's the next bit definitely this bit that we've torn the edges on yeah I need to learn that lesson if I've done a mock-up that I want to use, put it somewhere apart from on the phone you're actually using to record with, because that's not helpful. <laughs> right, so that's there, and it's catching the edge of this lattice, and it's catching the edge of this. So that's looking good there. There we are. Right, so the next thing is this handmade one. And that goes, straddles both of these, goes like that. And I haven't inked it. I'd better ink it. We'll just stick with that premise that we'll ink everything. And then it should have a cohesive look. So I don't want white edges. There we are. Some of my 100 day projects will not be this complex. <laughs> 
just warning you. Um, I want the handmade bit up there. So just down from those and straddling both. And you can take this recipe, if you like, and use it for all sorts of things, all sorts of themes. And in fact, I may well have a go at using it for something very, very different. Um, oh, I've just remembered something. Let's just see if I can dig that up. Oh yeah, that's all right. What I want to put in there is half of my salvage patina butterfly. So I'm going to chop them in half. Look away if you're squeamish. Oh, sorry, butterfly. And I'm going to just pop that into there. Like that. So let's stick him in. And so for those of you who are wondering, what is my dinner today? I bet that doesn't even include one of you, but never mind, I'm going to tell you. We are back to our favourite salmon stir fry with noodles. I love it. It's got pak choy in it. It's got sweet corn, carrots, peas. It's just so delicious. Words cannot tell you. It's one of Mr. F's specialities, although he does have many. Um, but I love it. It's one of my favourites. Yesterday we had Gravelax. That's also very, very nice. I love salmon. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, right, okay, so the next thing is the cremo, and it goes across there. Let's just do the same thing to it. I think I might want to tear the end off this, actually. It's just a bit too rigid. So that goes along there, and yeah, to about there. It does come out this side, but that's fine. I'm going to tear that off just in case that becomes visible, which it might, I'm not sure. And glue the stone. I can't believe I'm signing myself up for a 100 day project. It seems, it seems a lot at this stage. But, you know, I've explained to you that I might not do it for a hundred days, but I will do a hundred things. So you will see the fruits of my labor. There we go. That's that. Now then, um, uh, that one wants to go there, I think, but I, I need to need to finish this bottom part off. So I need that to go in place. So I can see what I'm what I'm doing. Right, this piece comes along here. Let's tear the end off that. Let's ink around it. There we go. Actually, the back of that was nice as well. It's Timmy paper. What do you expect? Of course, it's nice. just under that cremo and along over the lattice like that there we go so now I can put that where it's going to go and I can I just want to bring that down a touch because I want to see that butterfly um, so this one of the word sticks it's going to go in there like that and the other part of that salvage patina butterfly is going to go under there like that yeah okay so let's hold that there let's stick our salvage patina butterfly down first So about there, I think, about there I reckon. Oh, a bit on the conch. 
He's a bit wonky. And he doesn't want to stick either. I might you change to using Colol and see if it's a bit more if it wants to stick over the texture a bit better. Let's get that straight like that. Yeah, it does feel like it has a bit more grab, if I'm honest. Lovely. Excellent. Let's get this stuck down. Oh, inky. Inka rink. I'm excited that we're going to have a tag in our box. <laughs> That's brilliant. There we go. So this is going there. So I need to get this just up under there like that. That's that's perfect there. Yeah, lovely. That's great. A bit of glueage going on there. Lovely. Right. So for my next piece it's uh, this one and it comes out sort of there like that just not level with the end we're trying to make it sort of staggered so let's ink around that stick that in I'm going to use the collar again it does seem to be a bit grippier Actually, I might like that above that rather than below it. So I'm going to put that there, like that. So that's there. So that's straight, that. That's a bit better, I think. Right, coming along, coming along. Um, in the top, I've, I used this one. So let's ink that, get that stuck down We're nearly there, guys. Nearly there. So that's going to come out the top and straddle the two pieces under it, like that. Marvellous. And then we've just got one more piece apart from the field label to stick on, which is this piece. And that just goes under there, like that. Yeah, okay. That's quite a lot of glue. Get rid of some of that. So I'm just going to pop that under there, just staggered a little bit. Give it a good press down. Let's get the towel and give everything a good press down. There we are. I'd love to see some of your versions of this if you do it in in pretty. Because uh, I think the, like I say, the recipe itself, the you know the shapes and the bits etc that you need i think they would look lovely in in other themes and put the lid on that because i think we're finished with it it's gonna go there yep might even have a go myself at a pretty one who knows Right, so I just want to miss that butterfly wing and that butterfly wing and I want it fairly straight, obviously. Is that straight? That looks straight. There we go. So give that a good press down because there's a few layers underneath that now.
There we are, I think that's okay. And then the only remaining thing to do is stick our butterfly on the top, which is lovely. The one I made earlier was more orangey. Where's he gone? Here he is. I'm thinking I like him better. I've gone a bit too red on that one. I'm going to use this one. Now, do I want to prop his wings up a little bit? That might be an idea. Hadn't it? Let's see if I can find any. Oh, yeah, here we are. Dimensional tape. Now, I don't want much at all. It's just a sort of idea. So just, ooh, something stick in there. Just on the peak of that wing. It's down here. Same on the other side. See how dirty my fingers are with ink and stuff. Ugh. That bit there. And a little bit down at the bottom. There we are. That might be a bit close to the edge. I think that bit is. Let's just bring it in a little bit so you can't see it. There we are, right. So let's just whip these backings off. Whip, she says. Yeah, there we go. This tape's quite good at releasing. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue on. I'll use my collar because it hasn't let me down. Just over each of the little pads. Just give me a bit of room for manoeuvre and then down the centre of his body. Okay, so let's stick his body down. I think that's about right. Yeah, that looks fine. And then they will stick down. Just need to hold his body in place while he while he sets. Just leave my finger there for a minute, put the lid on my glue. And that, ladies and gents, pretty much. Oh, he looks lovely, doesn't he? That looks nice. Standing proud. That's nice. I really like it. I'm going to have to put something on that to hold it because the wings are trying to drag it up. What have I got that I can put on there to hold it? That's quite a weight, this little ray. I'll leave that on there. So all that needs to happen now is I need to back it with something because it gets all messy when you're doing techniques. And call it number one and put it in my box. In fact, I'm going to put it in my box now because I can't wait and you can see what it looks like. So there we are. Numero uno. Lovely. So that's all for today, folks. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, you'll be seeing a lot of me in the next hundred days, for sure you will. Um, I'll see what ideas I can come up with, but they all will be based around tax. That much I can't tell you. So bye for now, people. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your day and see you soon. Bye bye.